imagine that you're driving a car and all you have is your rear view mirror. And that is essentially what we do in our day-to-day -day lives. Beyond the blindingly obvious, all we have is the data behind us as a predictor of the future. And we are driving billion dollar or multi-million dollar cars, which are our companies. In general, if you think about the blindingly obvious, it is all motherhood and apple pie, everything's very good. It's like, it's never about, if I could serve every one of you perfectly, I don't need much of decisions. It's the right thing to serve every one of you perfectly. It's when I need to make trade-offs. I, I can only serve one-fourth of the population. Which one-fourth? What is the ramification? How does it work? It's not about gut feel. It's not about a squishy feel. It is oftentimes you can go and do a lot better than squishy good feel. So segmentation becomes key. And segmentation right from category, gender, region, seasonality, trend, decomposition. And these are, have been studied. These are applicable. It's not a gut feel anymore. In general, what I find across the board, analytics, unlike, say, operations, where you know that if I fix this, this solves, this reduces cost by $100,000. Analytics is not quite that. It is an enabler in decision making, but you can't say next month, does it save 50,000? Does it save 100,000? Does it save 200,000? You don't know. So the unpredictability often makes analytics an afterthought. Not great as a, as a trend, not fantastic as a trend. Why? Because while it could be an afterthought, it's not guaranteed to make you $100,000 in the next year or next month. But it's guaranteed that every decision you make will be a little better when you have the analytics. I'll talk briefly about some pieces. We can, if there's interest, I'll go deeper into some of these. Phase of life. A company at any point is in a phase of life. A category that you launch is in a phase of life. Which phase are you in? If you're truly word of mouth, Word of mouth being, let's give an example. Word of mouth, I love the product, I tell, I tell you, and he, we both tell two more people each. It's literally an exponential curve that you will see. It's not approximately, it's not somewhat exponential, it is literally exponential. You're doubling in constant periods of time, constant periods of time being the interval in the fan out of communication. If you don't see exponential, is word of mouth working? Probably not that much. Should every product have word of mouth? Probably not. Let's why not. To give an example, a fancy wristwatch has great word of mouth. It travels word of mouth because the moment you see, you ask word of mouth about it is, oh, this is great. This is fantastic. Right from SEO, SEM, conversion funnel, page layout, recommendations, what items to recommend to whom, fraud detection, who are, what time of the day do most fraudulent people show up on the site, what are their typical transactions, what are the patterns, price elasticity, what happens to each item if you reduce the cost by price by 10 rupees or increase it, what is the optimal way, I have 100 items to sell, any trade-off is a great place for this. I have 100 items in inventory. 200 people have ordered. Who should these 100 items go to? What are you maximizing? A lot of it is about experimentation. Many of us think innovation is by great intuition, brilliance. You're probably no more than 5 to 10% brighter than most people. The deviation between the smartest person and the least smart person in this room will not be more than 5 to 10 percent. Oftentimes, the critical differentiator is how rapidly could you experiment? How rapidly could you chuck out the losing ideas and pursue the winning ideas? And one key area is experimentation platform. 